Let's go to something a little more ridiculous, shall we? Bruce Hopman is a put-upon middle child himself, and he decided to start sharing his pain and disappointment with the world on a regular basis in comedic form. On the Middle Child blog, good morning, Bruce. Hey, good morning. <laughs> Do you love my dramatic intro? Yeah, I love the uh, – yeah. here's something more ridiculous. Hey, Bruce. <laughs> Well, Bruce, let's face it, from one middle child to another, we know that we've suffered. I was going to say, full disclosure, you, yeah. are, you are a card-carrying member of the International Middle Child Union. I even have a T-shirt and everything. So, yeah. um, you know, uh, Bruce hit me up and he pointed out, I did not know that one Donald J. Trump was indeed a middle child. Well, here, here, here's the way it goes. If you're not the firstborn or the lastborn, you're a middle child. So uh, Donald Trump is the fourth or fifth. It doesn't matter where you fall in the middle. I mean, being smack dab in the middle which, by the way, is the name of the blog, Smack yeah. Dab Blog, um, that, that's clearly the worst. But anybody who's not the first or last suffers, you know, falls into the category of being a middle child. And Donald Trump is surely falls into that category. I, I will tell you that. He, he has, exhibits many of the traits of a middle child, not, not the least of which is a constant need for attention. L- let's talk about why you started your blog in the first place, because you and I have spoken, but you've not spoken to this audience, I don't think, since I got to Denver. So uh, let's talk about why why the middle child, why smack dab in the middle, why is this a blog, and why is being a middle child more challenging? Well, it, start, it started because uh, I was doing research for a book I was writing about growing up being a middle child and, and came across the fact that there is a holiday on August 12th called Middle Child's Day. And the irony of there being a holiday honoring middle child children that nobody celebrates was inescapable <laughs> to me. So I thought I need to, I, somebody needs to straighten this out. Somebody needs to make the world aware of Middle Child's Day on August 12th. And I started on a crusade, and it kind of went a little viral. I held a strike on Middle Child's Day a few years ago, a global strike, mid kid strike, and uh, it got some attention, media attention, and it, people were, were kind of responded to it. And they thought it might be onto something there. Um, I continued on with it. I've been reaching out for the past few years, actually, to uh, minor league baseball teams. Minor league baseball teams now celebrate Middle Child Appreciation Nights all across the country on Middle Child's Day and all around Middle Child's Day. Um, I love it. And then, and then if you remember, uh, when the government shut down, I formed the Middle Child Party. Exactly. Because- <laughs> And and I think you were the first person to purchase a Middle Child Party logo yes, T-shirt. Yes, I was. Uh, also the only person. Um, <laughs> and um, and because uh, I realized a middle child has those qualities that are needed to bring two sides together. We're always, we're always stuck in the middle. Uh, and and psychologists say that we do have the qualities that that those diplomatic qualities. We know how to compromise. We're agreeable. So it seemed to me a middle child needed to lead us out of that government shutdown. And I would like to remind your audience, we formed the Middle Child Party. You and I spoke. Ten days later, the strike was over. Did we get any credit for that? No. But I, I, look, I don't want to overplay our part in it, but but we formed the party, and then the crisis was over. I, so, yeah, I'll, I I'll take credit. I mean, obviously, because as middle children, you have to stand up and yell to get any kind of credit for anything. You know, Bruce, how, people talk about, and I think one of the reasons that I connected, obviously, is as a middle child, the things that you talk about on the blog, they resonate with me. It's constantly being overshadowed, shoved aside, being called the wrong name. You know, okay. when, when you're a middle child, it's just like you just shout out the name of the dog, whatever, and you're expected to respond. But now we have Donald Trump. Is he actually a classic middler, as we're calling it? Because he almost seems a little firstborny to me. Well, I look, I, I, I describe Donald Trump as a middle, like a middle child on steroids. He takes everything uh, that, about us and, and really blows it out. I mean, first of all, you got the hair. The yeah. hair that screams, look at me. You know, I'm sure all his siblings have kind of normal hairdos. His is not what I would describe as normal. So, you know, that need to be different and stand out. So it starts with the hair. He's loud. Look, when you compare him, and by the way, he's not the only, I'd like to, we could talk about the other candidates. He's not the only candidate who is a middle child. But, you know, he's the most classic. What's he want to do? All he wants to do is piss off the other candidate. He pushes their button. He does everything he can. He calls them names. He does anything he can to, to rile them up. It's such classic middle child behavior. It's, 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 all, it's laughable. But, um, so, yeah, he's like, uh, of all the candidates, his, his middle childness just comes like boiling, you know, comes screaming through. You know, Rand, Rand Paul, by the way, is also a middle child. 
Um, now, here's a guy that once filibustered for 13 hours, another time for 10 hours. Again, this need for attention, he's just going to stand up there and talk until somebody makes him stop. Again, these, you know, these middle child traits that we're seeing in politicians. So while, while I say middle children have qualities that are, 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 make them good um, politicians, they also have some qualities that make them bad politicians. Well, it, it, and I find it fascinating that, number one, you've, you've delved into this so deeply. Any uh-huh. other candidates? Are, do you know of any other candidates that are middle, middle children? Because do, I know of, do I know of any? Jeb Bush is a middle child. Now, he's the third of six. Now, this is pretty classic middle child behavior, too. His older brother was a governor, so what's he going to do? I want to be a governor, right? Then his older brother becomes president. Oh, I want to become president. You know, what was his father, president? I want to be where my dad is. It's like you have to carve out your own nut- niche, uh, Jeb. This you, is not going to end well. You know what's you know funny, though? Works. You know what I've been told by multiple people who are on the inside track of the Bush family? I call them Bushies is that the Bush family always thought it would be Jeb that was president. And then George jumped up and kind of said, no, I'm going to be president. Typical older child behavior, yeah, wouldn't you like say? Leapfrog, leap, leap, yeah. Leapfrog the middle child. It's course. like, here's my dreams, and now I'm going to go do them for you, that kind yeah. of thing. And now Jeb is left like, oh, you know, it's not, it's not going to happen. So we, we, here's the one that, 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 that surprises me the most, and I, this is the one I think. Marco Rubio is a middle child. Now, now on the surface... Marco Rubio appears to be completely well adjusted, but that's the, that's the problem. That's the kind of middle child you have to watch out for. The one who appears to be, because we know you and I know there's no such thing as a well adjusted middle child. So I don't know what it is about Marco Rubio yet, but but something's gonna ha- something's gonna happen. Everything is too calm and even keeled. Something's gonna we're gonna find out something about Marco Rubio. But isn't part of being a middle child being able to fly under the radar and not have any controversy around you, just kind of go with the flow and not create any uh, any problems? So maybe that's where Marco Rubio's living right now. Right, right now, yeah. Except if the if the other middle child keeps pushing his buttons, it's gonna it, it could get ugly. By the way, you know the popular belief the 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 firstborn lobby has been you know, putting this. <laughs> This, the news out there for decades that most United States presidents were firstborns. This is completely, uh, completely untrue. So it, as a matter of fact, that statistic that 52 percent of American presidents were were firstborn was uh, based on not including, not including older female siblings. So that if you had an older sister, oh, yeah, okay. When you break it down. The middle children, again, not firstborn or lastborn, anyone in the middle, 37% of U.S. presidents were, were middle children. 28% were firstborn. So, so most U.S. presidents were middle children. And I'm not, I'm not going to say that's a predictor of this election, but, but more U.S. presidents were, were middle children that, than, than were not. So I love it. Bruce, how can, how can people read all of your political analysis uh, on the middle child syndrome in politics, where can they find that? I, I don't. I don't see this as no political bias. This is all birth order bias. So yes, not, it's the not best kind of bias, bias, really, Bruce. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's. Um, they could go to the blog, smackdabblog. dot com. You'll find all this stuff. I'm on Twitter. Um, they could follow at Midkid Musings, and I would encourage people to do what you did, Mandy. It's, it's the holiday season. It's very difficult to buy gifts for the middle child. Go to the blog, smackdabblog.com. You will find the Smack Dab Shop. All kinds of apparel there for middle children. We have the Middle Child Union logo T-shirts, Middle Child Party T-shirts, the Middle Child Flag T-shirts. We also have what um, n- brand new hand-me-down clothes for middle children. You know, we're always wearing <laughs> other people's clothes. Uh, but I, and, and it's yicky. You don't want to wear other people's clothes. So I've created a line of brand new hand-me-down clothes. They say things on them like this was my brother's T-shirt, but it's new. So you don't Oh, that's fantastic. That I but, know I'm buying something uh, on the blog today. Well, now my first and second customer. So there you go. Nice. You know I love you, Bruce. You, you know that I love you. I'm putting a link to the Smack Dab blog right now on uh, my blog at khow.com. And people could just go click through for there to find the perfect I will, I will gift. Put extra staff on the phones because yeah. I'm sure the phone lines will be flooded. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure too. You can go find the perfect gift for your middle child in your life. Hey, Bruce, I'll talk to you again soon, my friend. Hey, thank you so much, Mandy. Bye. No problem. Have a good one. Right. We will be back after this on Talk Radio 630 K. Hal. Radio 630. K.